Hey YouTube, it's your girl Dr. J and I thought I'd come and do a quick video on what we're doing for science this year. For science we decided to do biology and the reason why we decided to do biology was because we were also doing a big biome study where we were going to study all the major biomes and it's probably going to take us about a year to do it so it just made sense to do um, biology alongside it. What I decided to use was Pandia Press's Real Science Odyssey, and we're using biology level two. The reason why we're using level two is because it is a middle school biology. So even though the Wonder Twins are six and Speedster is eight, um, you guys know I personally don't believe in using elementary school textbooks for science because they, they lack the depth. And because the depth isn't there, there's a really incomplete understanding of the science. And my personal opinion, I've personally found that middle school is kind of that first time where you can get a lower level science, but with a complete story and enough depth, depth for people to really, for the kids to really understand the topic. So that's why we're using this. And I like it, it is a secular science program. So we, I chose it on purpose. The reason is because we have a STEM-based homeschool, so there are going to be some things that are expected of my kids for them to know and understand. And if my kids choose to go into an area of science, especially something like a biological science, there's going to be some topics that they're expected to know and understand. And one of them is, is one of those areas that's generally not covered in a religious-based um, science program, and that's going to be some evolution. And so... That's why I went with a secular science. I did it on purpose, but I just wanted to let people know that if you were to use this <laughs> this uh, science book, there there is going to be um, a, an entire unit on evolution. I really like um, Pandia Press's uh, biology course for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is because it has um, one solid information but in addition to having solid information i love that it has two labs every week or if for every chapter and um each lab one is going to be a more hands-on type of lab where you go into that topic a little bit more in depth and the other is using your microscope so this is our microscope it's wrapped in the plastic just to keep dust out but this microscope has been getting a workout since we have been doing this um science program this is not, and also this is not what, what kind of I think we're going to do. This is what we're actually using. I waited until we were about um, a month and a half to two months into our school year before I'm starting to do these videos because I wanted to tell you guys what we were doing, not what I theoretically think we're going to do because I think sometimes, you know, I've done it in the past where I go, oh, I'm going to use this. And then we started and then I realized that it's not going to work for us. But I had just told people that we were going to use it. So I decided this year... I'm only going to talk about what we're doing and show what we're doing as opposed to theoretically what we're going to do. So this is what we're doing in our science. Okay, so um, I love that it has two labs um, for each one, a microscope lab. I really love that it has um, things like um, what you should know, things you should know. And so um, basically, oh, I'm killing myself, for this one, you guys can see like this is uh, what you should know and my eldest was able to go through and fill in those sort of things. So I do that kind of like test, test of the chapter and what I do is after we finish the chapter, before we start the next chapter, I'll go over the things that we should know. And I love that we can kind of fill it out and keep it. I also actually, I chose to get the PDF file. Um, one, so that we can always go back to it and we could fill things out. And I, and I love that I can write in it and not worry about it. So I will write their answers in uh, for questions that I ask them about it. I'm turning to a page where I did it. Like, for instance, you know, I can ask them kind of a discussion question and I'll write kind of what they have said about it. Um, I do a lot of writing. Um, and for the kids, not because they're young, but because they all have dysgraphia. And when you have dysgraphia, it, it affects your ability to write significantly. And so I care about their knowledge as opposed to, you know, their written output. So sometimes you'll see my handwriting. My handwriting is just as bad as theirs. I have a terrible pencil grip. <laughs> so, um, but so sometimes you'll see things and it's, and it's written out and you go, oh, that child has terrible handwriting. No, that's me. 
And so I didn't want their dysgraphia to affect their output. And so if it means that I need to write stuff, then I do. Um, another thing that I really love about having a PDF file is that, you know, this, this, the back page is blank. I know it's killing trees, but I try to use it well. Um, so I'll write notes. So like here, this is a note that says, you know, make a pocket with the nine characteristics of life because that's what was on this chapter. And then I also have various notes in here. Like this one is telling me some things that I want to make sure that they look up on the computer to understand and, and, and get a better look at it. And then I have notes on when I want us to watch a playlist. Like here it says, watch YouTube playlists on viruses because that's what this chapter was talking about at the time. And one of the things that I try to do is make sure that I have other kind of things for them to see and experience um, and not just rely on the book itself and or what, you know, Pandia Press thinks they should know. I have been extremely impressed at the amount of good science that I can find on YouTube. So I generally make YouTube videos, I mean, a YouTube playlist around some of the major topics that we're going to be doing. This, um, right now we're working on sales, uh, the chapter on sales from this book. So I have, I have a YouTube playlist on sales that we're looking at. So... I've been, again, really impressed with it and have been able to supplement really well. Um, some of the labs that they've been able to do, like this one, um, this is one of my six-year-olds. Faster Fox made this. Um, this is an animal cell. And um, she also made the little um, tabs with a uh, label maker. And she attached it to the cells, um, to the various uh, components of the cell with a toothpick and so I like that so basically what we did was we learned about animal cells in the book and then we made the little model and then each child made this for themselves and these did double duty because they're also earning um, along with our biology um, work that we're doing in our homeschool they're also earning a biologist badge on DIY.org that they're really active in so this is one of the first things that they completed and it worked out well because they had to do it for their um, in our in our lab anyway but they also that was also a challenge for their biologist badge on DIY.org so that's been really good another reason that uh, doing biology worked out really well for us was that my kids are all taking an astrobiology course right now at space camp and so they go once a week and they're all three of them are taking um, astrobiology but the twins are taking it at the elementary level and speedsters taking it at the middle school level but for a lot of work they have the same homework like this is one of their homework assignments this is them doing my tools this um this is their work with um plant animal cells so it was right in line with what we were doing um, for our biology course. And then some of the stuff that they had to do, like this was one of their uh, homework sheets where he had to name each numbered stage of the plant cell, draw examples of the bacteria of, of three types of cells, bacteria, plant, and animal, describe cell theory, um, answer questions like what is the shape of DNA. They also had to translate DNA code sequences all three of them had to do it, and all three of them did it with no problem, which was great because I had not done that before. I had never seen it before, but they were able to do it by themselves, solo, with no help from me, so life was good. So <laughs> that's wonderful. So um, we, I try to add in as many components as possible so we're not just relying on the textbook or just doing what the textbook says. Like, for instance, the textbook only called for us to make an animal model but we're also going or the kids are also going to make a plant um cell model as well so we have a um plant cell model that they're going to look at and then look up some stuff online and also make it so another thing that we're doing that's not called for in the book but i chose to have them do it is to keep an interactive notebook and so this is our binder and at the front of the binder I put an interactive notebook and we just have the various components like when I said make a chart with the nine characteristics of life here's a card for each of those characteristics in their little chart and this 
page it goes we have cell theory unicellular and multicellular uh, basic cell structure so they have the cell membrane cytoplasm genetic material and prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are explained there this one has what do plant cells have uh, that are um, addition additional to what would be found in animal cell because here is all the components of an animal cell and then these are the components that are found in plants and I don't have um, a like interactive notebook uh, on biology I, we're actually just going through the book we see we see something that makes sense for us to pull out and put into the interactive notebook and literally I'm just sitting there with eight and a half by eleven sheets of colored paper and we go through and say what makes sense to put in or not and the kids will do it or sometimes they'll just dictate to me and I'll write exactly what they dictate so that's another way that we're using it. I have some videos that we're uh, going to be doing as well like when we get to evolution I have um, that's when I'm using a Howard Hughes Medical Institute um, DVD on evolution and then one on genes. Another thing that I've been adding is uh, Reader's Digest How Nature Works and like here is the section on cells and so one of the projects that we'll be doing from this book this week is on osmosis and when we did our plot study on living things in soil they had another project that we could do that was outside of our Based primary textbook, but we could do this study and see the living things that are in um, our own soil. Another thing that we use Basher's biology book, and this is another place for us to kind of look up definitions. Again, we do not rely on just what our primary textbook says for definitions. In addition to the Basher book, I also have uh, this is Kingfisher Science Encyclopedia. This is Usborne's Science Encyclopedia. This is the Firefly Science Encyclopedia. And this is Help Your Kids with Science. That has a lot of definitions. So we'll pull out all of those and compare and contrast the various definitions that they give for words like cells, bacteria, virus, that sort of thing. Another interesting one was to look at the debate on is bacteria living or not. And so those are some of the things that we'll do. Another aspects is adding in the graphic novels from Max Axiom uh, from from the graphic library so we have adaptation genes um, scientific method we always start with the scientific method so you read that one a lot and photosynthesis so all those are topics that's covered in our biology book so when we get to those topics we read them easily um, another thing I do is cultural studies are embedded into our science so uh, when we get to blood cells, we have our models on the red and white blood cells, but also when we talk about cells, we'll be uh, reading this book on Dr. Charles Drew, Blood Bank um, Innovator. And you guys know I don't use the library a whole lot, so a lot of these books, all these books are actually owned. So it doesn't matter when we get to them. I don't have to run out and go to the library. It's just part of our own um, homeschool library. And so we'll use that because I really wanted my kids to know that um, there's always been diversity in the sciences. And even though they may not talk about Dr. Charles Drew in our biology textbook, we're going to talk about Charles Drew. Um, and we still, yes, I have books on Louis Pasteur. It's also important to know some of the, the mainstream people that they're going to be encountering, like Pasteur. So we have books on those too. But I also wanted to make sure that we had additional books that featured um, uh, African Americans that had made very amazing contributions to the world of biology and what we know about biology. Women, um, scientists, um, Asian scientists, Hispanic and Puerto Rican, I mean everywhere. Basically I try to make sure that they understand that contributions to human knowledge have not just been confined to one country, one culture, or one continent, but we have had amazing contributions to all the areas of science from all over the world and even if we have to dig because some of that stuff isn't mainstream science mainstream knowledge we'll make sure that we dig so that they have a more full view of the diversity that's in the science um, that's in each of the sciences 
So that's what we're doing for biology. I have, we're, we're doing a few other things with it, but again, it is aligned with our biome study that we're doing and also aligned a little bit with our history that we're gonna be doing um, as well. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment box below. This is Dr. J and I'm out. Bye-bye.